I'm Renny. This is Renny Reads. And here on my channel, no, okay. I have pronouns. I'm tired. You look like a void in the camera. Yeah. Yeah, you just look like a black blob. I know I don't have any lights up, so that doesn't help, but you're very scary. Oh, very scary. <laughs> I'm Renny, my pronouns are they, them, and this is Renny Reads. Here on my channel we talk about queer books, fan fiction, human rights, and just about everything in between. I have my handy dandy notebook with a million different things. Um, today's book is going to be Anne of Greenville by Mariko Tama Tamaki? Tamaki. I took three years of Japanese, I should know how to pronounce that. <laughs> so a couple announcements. Um, the first couple videos we posted the frame rate on my camera was wrong, so it's this will hopefully be a little bit better. We've been kind of like testing and doing stuff. Um, also, I did my makeup. Please don't think that it's going to be a normal thing because I really hate doing my makeup. Um, it makes me look more feminine than I'm comfortable with a lot of the time. I just thought it would be nice though because Anne in this book, the main character, is obsessed with the color green and purple and I have purple hair and I have a cute little Powerpuff Girls Colourpop palette and I was like, oh, I could do both. So that's the vibe for the day. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So Anne of Greenville. Super cute book. I It was published in 2022. There isn't an ebook option. I cheat a lot of the times and try and find like a PDF version that I can put on my phone so I can go and like look at quotes and stuff. And I listened to this as an audiobook, so I wasn't able to take any screenshots of anything and my library doesn't have a copy of it that isn't going to be it's uh, they do, but it's not going to be ready until September because so many people have it on hold and all of the bookstores and stuff in my area don't carry it. So you're gonna have to deal without quotes this time, I'm sorry. Um, I do recommend you read it yourself though, it's very cute. I, there's, the, yeah, it's just very cute. I'm trying not to say um, Tegan. <laughs> okay, trigger warnings for Anne of Greenville. Uh, it is a story about an Asian American adopted girl of two of a lesbian couple so already there are just a couple trigger warnings even though it was published in 2022 the the book as well has a page beforehand a lot of books are doing this now which I really love um, but it has a book or like a page beforehand and it states these trigger warnings so I wrote them down I went back and I re-listened to them and I wrote them down and I added one of them because it didn't mention it but the theme of it was very prevalent in the book um, and I don't think that the author intentionally left it out I think it just she maybe thought it just enco was encompassed in all the other stuff so nothing against that um okay trigger warnings Tegan's gonna put them up on the screen they are homophobia racism bullying and xenophobia but yeah so if that is not your vibe today please click away you can either come back and watch this when you're feeling a little bit better, or you don't have to watch it at all. You know yourself better than I do, and I won't presume to tell you what you can and can't handle. But anyway, okay, so, Anne of Greenville. It starts off with Anne, Shirley. It is a retelling of Anne of Green Gables. That was the way it was marketed. I grew up really loving Anne of Green Gables. It was one of my favorite books as a kid. Me and my sister would play pretend uh, after we read it and stuff like that. It was one of my favorite books. And I, I would say, I'll talk more about it later, but I would say it wasn't an exact retelling, obviously, because Anne of Green Gables is kind of a collection of stories and, and it goes on through up to college for her. It's a very long book. But this one just goes through like I think a year at least. But that being said, the author did a really good job of characterizing this Anne as the original Anne Shirley. She goes on tangents a lot. She uses very big words. She's got a very big imagination. She's very like likable. She gets along well with like everybody. She's very sweet. I really thought she was very sweet but Anyway, so it starts off with Anne Shirley and her moms, Lucy and 
Millie. Lucy is a vice principal. She's been working in the education system for a really long time and she just got a new position as the vice principal of Greenville High. So they uproot from, is it Petaluma, California to this city called Greenville in the south. I want to say there is a town in South Carolina called Greenville but it's mentioned like in the first couple pages that Lucy, the, the mom who is the VP, she grew up in North Carolina and I moved from California to North Carolina a, a couple of years ago and I would say it very much gives the same small town vibe that I found has kind of, it just kind of is like that here in the South. So I'm thinking it's either South Carolina or North Carolina. It's never explicitly stated, but the town is called Greenville. So they moved to Greenville and first things first, we kind of get like a taste of Anne Shirley. She is obsessed with really bright colors. Her favorite colors are green and purple and she loves disco. Her favorite music genre is disco. She, the first couple pages she references like a bunch of different disco artists. I'm not really a disco listener, but I do know that she, she mentioned Queen immediately and I just knew I was gonna like her because Queen, I grew up on Queen, I really love them. It starts off with her and her parents moving into their new house and she decides she's gonna go do a performance in the little town square. She, it's her like, welcome to Greenville kind of thing that she does. She's very performative in the sense that she really likes performing arts. Um, she really likes roller skating. So she takes her little roller skates and she's made these cute little paper mache disco balls and she finds the town square and she hangs up her little paper mache disco balls all around the square and she's got her speakers and she starts a song on them. I didn't write down the song. Uh, but it's 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 a disco song and she starts just like dancing around she's on her roller blades roller skates and she's doing a little routine that she put together and it's going great and then all of a sudden this group of kids like turns off her music and starts tearing down her disco balls from around and just like making fun of her and they throw her disco ball disco balls into the water fountain in the square and they're just like making fun of her, calling her names, all this stuff. And while she's picking all of that stuff up, another girl comes up and is like helping her fish them out. And Anne is just going on a rant about how bad the microplastics are for the fountain system and all this stuff. And this new girl, she's, she's very cute. I, I liked her immediately. Um, she's described to be very pale with a bunch of freckles and she's also wearing roller skates and her hair is like a bright green curly little tuft and it just reminded me of me um because i clearly i've got curly tuft for hair but she's very cute and this is her name is barry after um diana barry so they're obviously gonna be best friends but the three main kids that you really should care about are gilly tanner and Sarah. And these three are just the perpetual bullies of the group. They start off immediately by just terrorizing Anne. They just like make fun of her during the square and whatever. They just kind of ruin her little, you know, performance. And Anne, Anne just kind of brushes Barry off as well. Barry's trying to help and she just kind of brushes her off and Barry's like, okay, well like I'll see you at school on Monday then. And she's like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. So she goes home and this this instance shows kind of what the 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 relationship between her and the school the people at the school is going to be it's very combative just immediately like she's doing her own thing she's being her own self and immediately somebody just comes in and like tears her down and all that stuff so she goes home and her moms are unpacking and they're like oh did you did you like put on a good show and whatever and she doesn't tell people tell them that you know, it got interrupted and these kids were bullying her. So she she's just like, yeah, no, it was fine, whatever, and starts helping them unpack. And then the next day, her and her mom, Lucy, get ready to go to school because Anne goes to Greenville High. It's never stated if she's a freshman or like, I don't know what grade she's in. I would say just from the tone of the book reading it, she's either in ninth or 10th grade. She seems very young not in a bad way, but she just seems very young. So they go to school and 
and meets Barry up again and Barry's like everybody's talking about you like everybody thinks that you're some witch from California and you like put spells on people and like you're a lesbian and whatever and Anne's just like well I mean my parents are lesbians I'm just queer like whatever and Barry's like yeah that's just kind of how it goes here and she kind of does like a mean girls rendition of the the like cafeteria scene I guess like just the conversation goes that way of like this is who these people are and this is who these people are they do have more of a self-aware conversation of like I know it's bad to like put people in stereotypes like stereotype people but I just want you to be aware of like stuff and I thought it was cute I thought it was a little unnecessary just because they are teenagers and you know it, it I don't know it's just kind of the thing to do is to like fit into a group when you're a teenager but yeah so there are three different groups and the two important ones are like the transplants I don't know if that's the actual term the audiobook that I checked out was also from the library and I went earlier today to go check it out again and somebody had already checked it out so I wasn't able to go fact check myself and I only wrote very minimal notes on it because I was just so involved in it <laughs> so I apologize I'm not I did as much research as I could on it without really having much to go off of. Barry's like, so the, there's three important groups. There's the Forevers, which are the people whose families have been here since like the dawn of time, other than the indigenous people, she says. Um, they're, they're just the people who have been here for the longest and this is their group and this is their where they're gonna stay. And it's very much like white supremacist kind of vibes, like this is our land, even though it's not really our land kind of thing. And she's like, and then there's like the people who have only been here for a few generations and then there's the new people the transplants which would be you and I technically I guess would be one of those but my family's been here for a couple of generations so I'm kind of in that weird in between where I don't really fit into the people who have been here for a certain amount of years and then the people who are brand new. Barry is very much a social outcast. She's an artist. She wears the same coveralls every single day. She says later on that she's got a bunch of like the same pair because she just loves them so much and they're always covered in paint and she's always covered in paint and she's just adorable. I really loved her. <laughs> um, but yeah, so on the first day of school, Anne is doing her own thing. She's hanging out with Barry. They're going to class and at lunch Tanner, Sarah, and Gilly are all sitting at one of the tables and they start like very loudly making comments about Anne and Anne hears them obviously and they're not nice. They're, it's like a lot of slurs and a lot of just really derogatory racist things and like homophobic things and Anne hears them and she is the type of person who will just not stand for that. So she gets up and she goes over and is like, hey, do you have a problem with me? I don't think we've met before. I'm Anne. And they just like, Tanner specifically, he's the ringleader of the group. Tanner and Sarah are the like the double trouble. But Tanner just like keeps going. He keeps like making fun of her and whatever. So Anne's reaction to get him to stop is to pick up his slice of pizza and hit him across the face with it. And that just immediately, it, it spells trouble for her. They, they are immediately like dragged to the office. His mom and dad are there and like going berserk because she hit their son with a piece of pizza. And her mom, Lucy, is like already having a really rough day at school. She's already, she already doesn't fit. It's a very conservative small town and she's just having a hard time. She's already wearing clothes that apparently she already doesn't usually wear. She's trying to put herself in a box that she doesn't usually fit in. So she's just having a really hard time. And she just looks at Anne and she's like, really? On the first day of school? Like, you kind of have to make, babe, you gotta make a better impression than that. And Anne's like, well, they were saying like really awful things. And Lucy's like, I understand, but like, you know, we don't belong here yet. Like, we don't fit in yet. We need to, like, allow some grace. And, like, I think this is the part where Anne just kind of decides she's just not going to tell her moms about any of it because her moms are white. Um, Anne is Asian American. I want to say she's Japanese American, but I could be incorrect. I know she's Asian American, but she was adopted so both of her moms are white and so they don't really understand the racial motivation of it and she doesn't really get to touch on it because she keeps getting cut off every single time she tries to talk by either her mom 
or the main principal of the school. So she's just having a rough go of it. It's the first day that they've been there and she's just having a rough go of it. So after that, Tanner and Sarah and their little group, Gilly too, Gilly is also part of the problem. We'll talk more about her later, but Tanner and Sarah and Gilly start causing problems for Anne. So she has to kind of put herself like lower, she has to make herself smaller and apologize to Tanner for slapping him in the face with a pizza. And she does, and he just kind of draws it out of her. He's just like, she's like, I'm sorry. And he's like, okay, and? And she's like, and I won't do it again. And he's like, okay, and? And it just kind of goes on for a little bit. He's really gross. But not only does that happen, he takes it upon himself to just write the most horrible things or like just say the most horrible things to her. Some examples are there... Anne wakes up one morning, she's just like being herself, like normal, she's just wearing, she wears a lot of 60s clothes, a lot of thrifted clothes, um, it's very cute, her style seems very cute, it was very 60s disco, or like 70s almost, but she is just being herself, and one day she wakes up and there's like, go home dyke written on her lawn, and like in spray paint. So her first thing to do, she calls Barry and she's like, hey, I need help. Do you have any spray paint? And so their solution to this, instead of getting a hose, again, they're like teenagers, so I don't know. Instead of like getting a hose or anything, they spray paint a, I believe it was a David Bowie portrait. It was something over it. It was like some sort of portrait over it. And she takes a picture of herself with it. And her moms come out and see it and they just like, go crazy because like their daughter has painted spray painted their lawn for seemingly no reason because she doesn't tell them what was underneath it and not only does Tanner and his crew do that they also there's an audition sign up for the school play and like I said Anne is very much into performing so she was thinking about going and Gilly comes up to her one day and is like hey like I really think you should go and like sign up. I think I think it'd be a good idea. I think it'd be nice. Like I feel like we just got off on the wrong foot. I think it would be nice for you to go sign up for the school play. And Anne's like, okay, like, okay, finally, maybe like show of good faith. Well, when she goes to sign up, the Tanner and Sarah are standing like across the way and they've just written a whole bunch of nasty slurs and like nasty things. In like, I don't want to say in like Anne's likeness, but in in the way that it was very targeted towards her. It has her name in it a couple of times. It has her last name in it a couple of times. It just has like lesbian slurs and stuff like that in it. So like she she thought maybe oh we were turning a leaf with me and Gilly. Like maybe maybe Gilly could be the one to like help me breach this like gap between me and like these people and it doesn't end up happening. And yeah so also at one point Sarah gets so mad at her that she like hucks a soccer ball at her she like kicks it at her and like knocks her in the head and gives her a concussion when she's not looking like they're playing soccer for PE and Sarah just is so mad at her existence that she just like beans her in the head um so they're just like it's not even microaggressions because there are a lot of microaggressions in this as well but it's just like straight up aggression it's just straight up awfulness and nobody is doing anything about it like Anne doesn't really feel safe going to her parents to try and talk about it because she knows how stressed her mom Lucy is and you know her her other mom Millie she Millie's just kind of trying to hold the fort down and like keep the peace between them and so she doesn't want to stress them out anymore because she doesn't want them to think it was a terrible idea to move here because this job was like a really good opportunity for her mom. Yes and and also the principal of the place just seems to really have it out for her She's not nice at all. She really takes issue with Anne and Anne just kind of decides she's gonna lay low and she starts only wearing like jeans and a white t-shirt every single day. She washes that same pair of clothes every single night to wear every single day and she stops wearing like her cute little clothes and stuff and she just kind of tries to make herself blend in to to not cause problems. And of course it doesn't work because when people bully you and they want to ostracize you, they're going to do it anyway, no matter what you're wearing or what you're doing. Through this, though, her and Barry get really close. Her and Barry really connect. Barry, like I said, is an artist and she takes 
and one day to an old abandoned like putt putt like place like you know those like golf places those mini golf places it's an outdoor one and it's been abandoned and Barry has been going in and like painting over all of the things it's, it was a zoo theme so she is like painting over the animals and like giving them new life and stuff like that it's very sweet but they start hanging out a lot more and they start getting like really close and then Gilly Gilly she is the one who was named after Gil I don't remember his last name um but Anne Shirley in Anne of Green Gables it was her love interest the one that she ends up marrying um so Gilly um, right when I read that, I was like, oh, this is the love interest. Um, but yeah, so Gilly starts being more friendly to Anne. Um, there's one day where Anne just kind of realizes she might have a little bit of a crush on Gilly, because Gilly is just sparingly nice to her in, like, little convenient ways. Like, she'll stick up for her just a tiny bit. Like, if, if Tanner is calling her, like, a slur or something, Gilly will be like, stop it, Tanner. Like, that's not nice. And Anne kind of just clings to this because I think she just wants to be liked so badly by these people because she she just doesn't want them to cause problems and she wants this to be like a smooth transition. Gilly starts being nicer to Anne and Anne kind of develops an attraction to her. She she really likes her. So what happens is there's one day where Anne is roller skating. She's just roller skating. She's got her headphones in. She's just doing her own thing trying to just get out and go away and Tanner in the truck I think with his dad starts like car chasing her to try and run her over on the side of the road and the reason one of the reasons why I think this is like North Carolina or South Carolina even is that I live on the border of North and South Carolina so I'm able to like see both of them I guess the roads are awful both places but in California there are specific bike lanes everywhere no matter where you go I there's hardly somewhere where if there's not a bike lane there is at least three or four feet of just open space where a bike lane could go and so like if somebody were biking on the side of the road it wouldn't be a problem you just kind of like stay over in your lane a little bit further however in North and South Carolina there is not that it is just the road there's maybe like this much space between where like the road is and like there's not even hardly any sidewalk half the time it's it's so unwalkable but there's never really any bike lane and if there is a bike lane it's right in the middle of the freaking road I think it's so dangerous I think it's stupid <laughs> I don't like it <laughs> but yeah so she's on like roller skating and it's on this back road nobody's there and instead of like veering around her the truck that Tanner and her brother are in they just gun it and like go after her and so she has to throw herself off of the road to like not get run over and killed and she takes off her skates and just books it because she thinks she hears them stop and like get out of the car and so she books it she's going in to all of the like bushes and like into this private property area and she's not really sure like where she is but anyway she as it turns out Gilly is horseback riding it's her property and she's horseback riding so but unfortunately she'd been thrown off of her horse her horse just kind of like apparently he's he's just like a lot and he doesn't like anything so he just like kicked her off because he saw something he didn't like and so she is twisting her ankle and um, Anne finds the horse and then she finds Gilly and she helps Gilly back to her own house. They just kind of have like, it's it's a nice moment, I guess. They they just kind of connect and Gilly's like, you know, I'm really sorry that like everybody's so mean to you. Like, I don't know why they're that mean to you. I try to talk to them and it's like, no, it's fine. Just like heart eyes. She, she just like really has a thing for this girl. And you know, they kind of connect a little bit and Gilly's like, hey, do you want to like hang out with me soon? And Anne's like, yes, of course, obviously. As Gilly and Anne start getting closer, Anne starts blowing Barry off a lot more, which Barry is very clearly upset by this because Barry doesn't really seem to have any other friends or anybody that really like gets her. Her parents seem very sweet and like artistic as well, but she doesn't really seem to have a lot of friends in this school either. She seems very ostracized. She's also one of the only queer people like openly out queer people in the school as well and so that just kind of ostracizes her even more. So Anne auditions for the play eventually. She does end up getting her name on a sign-in sheet that is not written with horrible names and they end up doing Peter Pan and she gets cast as Peter Pan. 
because the the play that they usually do it's like a like a I don't remember what it's called I think it's a made-up play because it's it's something about like their town like specifically like the origins of their town or something like that and Sarah was expecting to get the lead or one of the leads it was it was Sarah and Tanner who were expecting to get the leads because it's like a romance kind of thing and they were expecting the same play and it apparently this play has been done for like years and years and years and it's it's either that or like just something stupid so they do Peter Pan though and Anne gets cast as Peter Pan and Tanner and Sarah take an issue with this and so they decide to very clumsily boycott the the play where they they show up to the rehearsals and they like sit down and all the scripts are passed out and the teacher who's running it is like okay like let's start running lines and then Sarah like puts her hand up and she's like my mom said it's unnatural for a girl to be Peter Pan so we're boycotting and the teacher's like okay um what does that mean and she's like well you need to change it so we're like you have to change it and he's like so are you not do you not want to be in the play anymore and she's like, no, I want to, we want to be in the play. We still want to be in the play, but we just don't want Anne to be Peter Pan. And he's like, well, thank you for bringing that to my attention. We're not changing anything. I got all the acceptance from the school. Like we wouldn't be doing this if I hadn't gotten approval. So I appreciate your concern, but unfortunately nothing will be changing. Yeah, Anne's life just kind of gets a little bit harder after that because she's cast as Peter Pan. She doesn't want to give up the role. Like she's specifically like, at this point, she's started dressing like herself again. She started being more of herself again. And she's like, no, I am who I am. And I really want this role. I really love theater. I, you know, worked really hard for this role. During the audition, you know, Tanner and Sarah really tried their best to make Anne look stupid and they they failed but you know it it took a lot for her to just audition in general and she's like no I worked really hard for this I deserve this role like I would have I wouldn't have gotten it if I didn't deserve it so I'm you know this is my role and so Tanner and Sarah start just being absolute monsters to her again and Gilly was previously hanging out with Anne and she kind of stops and she kind of starts playing devil's advocate between Anne and Tanner and Sarah and to Anne she's just like I think you know if you talk to them you could clear it up like they would understand your view and Anne's like they don't understand my view and and they don't want to like I don't understand what you mean I'll talk more about that later too. Amid this boycott Gilly is still on she's still on her shit. She's, she's just like, okay, well, I need you to talk to Tanner and Sarah. Like, there's this party that's gonna happen. You can come as my guest, you know, come as my guest, talk to them, they'll understand this whole thing will be put to rest, like, through the power of friendship. And Anne's like, well, I mean, I really like you, and I really want you to like me, so, like, I'll do it. And also, she this this whole thing is also causing problems for her mom Lucy who's the new VP and she's just like well if I talk to them and I clear it up everything will go away it'll be fine and so she texts Barry and is like hey do you want to go to the this party with me and Barry is very much like this is a bad idea like this is just a bad idea I don't think you should go but I'm not gonna let you go alone so if you're gonna go I'm gonna go with you and that's exactly what happens they go and the party's just a disaster. They show up and it's only like 6 p.m. and everybody's already drinking and like already drunk and Tanner and Sarah are already drunk and they have this huge like bonfire out in the like open area. It's it's like a big property. His, his parents are rich. Tanner's parents are rich. It's like this huge property and Barry and Anne go up to Tanner and Sarah and Anna's like hey like I just want to clear the air between us I really want to like do this play with you I think it'd be a really good thing like a really good team effort and Sarah like gets in her face and is like I don't understand why you have to be the center of attention I don't understand why you had to come here at all everything would be better if you just weren't here she just has a really lot of horrible things Tanner chimes in as well and then finally Anna's like you know what this isn't working 
I shouldn't have come like it was a bad idea we're leaving and Barry is like okay well before we leave I have to pee so <laughs> they go inside and Barry's in the bathroom and then all of a sudden people start yelling fire outside and it turns out the bonfire pit that they had set up somebody had knocked it over and there was a huge fire out in the lawn and so Barry and Anne are the only two people who run to the shed. They grab shovels and they start shoveling dirt over the fire and they manage putting it out. And by the time they're done putting it out, the fire department has come because somebody has called the fire department. And so Anne and Barry just kind of like toss their shovels aside and they're like, we're out of here. So they leave. But by the time they get home, Anne gets dropped off by Barry and Barry goes home and then Anne goes inside and Lucy and Millie are just like, where have you been? Tell us you have not been at Tanner's house. And Tanner decided to tell his dad that Anne and Barry had set the fire and then left when it got too bad. And he had been the one to put it out. And you know, so his dad was starting a smear campaign against Anne's mom to get her removed from her job and you know pressing charges against Anne for property damage and stuff like that he wanted it all paid in full and the worst part was was that in the email that he sent his parents or sent Anne's parents Gilly corroborated that story that Tanner said that Anne and Barry started the fire and Tanner was the one to put it out and Anne texts Gilly after after her and her mom have a huge fight because she's like I don't like poor Anne she she's like I didn't do it like why do you think I would do that because I wouldn't like you know me I'm your kid you know me I wouldn't do that Lucy is like well I have a hard time believing you because I have this email right here and she's like well if you will even email over your daughter then like this is why I don't tell you anything and she goes upstairs and she's grounded and she texts Gilly and is like why would you say that? Why would you corroborate them? And Gilly's like, well, I don't know. Like, I'm sorry. And Anne's just like, are you kidding me? And she texts Barry too. And is like, hey, like, I'm so sorry. I will pay for all the damages. Like, don't even worry about it. Like, can you believe this is what they're doing? And Barry doesn't answer her. And then the next day when she goes to school she catches Barry and is like hey like like can you believe this like I've got it don't worry like we're, I'm sorry you're in trouble but like I'll I'll pay for all of it and whatever and and Barry's like are you kidding me like you really don't see that like that's not the bigger issue here and Anne's like what do you mean and and Barry's like never mind like I just need some space I need I need to not talk to you right now and Anne, and of course, is very upset. She doesn't have any friends and, you know, Barry's ignoring her. I don't even really remember how it, like, got resolved. I just remember that, like, Barry and Anne have a fight and then there's a school dance. And Gilly, well, no, um, Anne invites Gilly to go because Gilly ends up, like, apologizing and they end up kind of being friends again. And then... Tanner takes it back like I think Gilly like sp like says I lied and so Tanner has to take it back and then after that Tanner and Sarah and Anne and all them are just cool it seemed very rushed they go to the stance it's Gilly and Anne and they go to the stance and she she's there and and Barry is there and every single time she tries to talk to Gilly and like not make a move but just like be a person with her. Gilly is so awkward. She just doesn't really know what to say. They don't have anything in, in common, like in interest or anything. Anne shows up, I think she's in like a bright green outfit and it's just so cute. And so she's in that and, and Gilly's just in like a regular dress and whatever and so she's just uncomfortable because Anne isn't conforming to like the stereotype and stuff. It felt very much like Anne kind of got what she wanted in the sense of she got to fit in with the kids who just made her life miserable and then at the end she just realizes like probably 20 minutes into the stance like this isn't where I belong. Like I don't belong here. And so she goes and she finds Barry and 
she also realizes during this that um, she didn't really have a crush on Gilly, she just wanted Gilly to like her, and she had a crush on Barry. This kind of came out of left field for me. I didn't mind it. It, it was very cute because she goes over to Barry and she's like, hey, can we dance? And Barry's just like, yeah. So they just dance around and whatever. And at the end of the night, Anna's just like, it's always been you. And Barry's like, what? And she's like, it, like you, you're the one who's always been there. Like, it's always been you. And they kiss. And it just kind of ends there. I will say the conflict resolution was a little weird. It felt very rushed, especially because of just like all of the things that Tanner and Sarah especially had done to Anne. Um, it, it just felt very rushed. But yeah, that was Anne of Greenville. I know it was a little short, but a lot of stuff happened in the book. And again, I really do want you to read this. I want you to read every book I talk about, except for What If It's Us and Red, White, and Royal Blue. Um, I don't like those books, but that is subjective. <laughs>
and was the one they were bigoted against and was the one who in their eyes was causing the problems. Gilly should have been the one to step in and say, hey, this is wrong for these reasons and you need to knock it off. She should have been advocating. And I think that a lot of allies, I'm gonna go with straight allies because I can't speak on any other community. A lot of straight allies like to put the allyship like stuff on their profile, in their name, you know, in, in their identifier, and then not do the legwork. And it's very important that straight allies do the legwork because we can scream till we're blue in the face about people needing to listen to us and we deserve rights and you know trans kids do not deserve to die over their identities and stuff like that like we can scream that until we're blue in the face but until the people who can connect with the bigots in the sense that they have things in common with bigots like like straightness or or you know like cisgenderedness or you know something like that like political affiliation or whatever like until they start speaking up and advocating for us we will not be heard or we will be heard but we will be ignored and I think this book did a very good job of displaying that it, it brought up a very good conversation for that one of the themes the reason I added xenophobia as a like trigger warning was because of just like the immediate otherness that Anne felt Anne and her family both felt while you know, when they moved, they moved from a from California and then to a little tiny small town in the south. And obviously it was very clear that they didn't belong there, but not only was it clear they didn't belong there, the town went out of their way to make them feel like they didn't belong there. So that's why I included that. But yeah, so the song for this book is I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. It's the book that, the book, it's the song that she consistently references. It she references it, references it in the very beginning. She uses it as her audition for the play and she uses it to close out the book as well. So I thought it was a very good, I wasn't going to pick one that, you know, the, the character already chose for herself. And the shop that I chose is called Madeline Claire Co. on Etsy. It is adorable. I have had my eye on, she does like rug tufting for some of it and she's got this balloon animal wall hanging um that's like a rug tufted balloon animal i think it's adorable it's an asian american owned company and i've had them and their little balloon animal thing saved for probably a good six months or so i just haven't like bit the bullet i might today to be honest because i just think it's really cute i want to like stick it like right here or something i don't know <laughs> but yeah um that was anna greenville i I really do hope you read it. I think it was a very good book. I think it was like it was light. The writing style was very light but also it was very heavy in the sense of the topics that it like conquered and I think it did really handle them very well. The only thing I really would critique is just like the kind of out of touch language used and then also the plot you know resolution just kind of hit you just immediately and I, I think you know give your characters a little bit more credit. I don't mind listening to another hundred pages of story for a plot resolution. I really don't. But yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Renny underscore reads or on Tumblr at Gravitationally Challenged Rabbits. Disclaimer again, on my Tumblr, I have been there since at least 2014 or 2015. So what you see is what you get. I'm not going to change anything. So if you go on there and you see me just reposting wild things, that's what I do. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you'd like to subscribe, go ahead. You can totally do that. If not, it was really nice having you. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye!